what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. And we are going to take this idea of auxiliary angle and say, if I take two trig functions like this and combine them, I should be able to write them as one trig function with a different amplitude, a different phase. Okay, And I'm going to use the auxiliary angle to find that phase. Okay? What am I going to do? I'm going to compare it. I'm going to say, I know that this will happen in some way. I just don't know what the amplitude or the phase are. Okay, So therefore, I'm going to say, let this thing here, this root 3 on 2 sine x plus 3 on 2 cos x, I know it should end up as a single trig function. So I'm just going to give that trig function a name. Uh, I don't know what its amplitude is. By convention, we use the capital letter R sine. And then I know the phase will also change, but I don't know how much by. So I also give that a name. Alpha is the most common uh, letter you'll see in there. Theta is also fine. Whatever you like, really. OK, now I'm predicting that this will happen. And I need to know what these pieces are. So just like we did here, I'm going to use my expansion, my trig expansion, for this and see what happens. So watch with me. If I expand this out, I've got an R right out the front. And then I'm going to have this big long expansion in the middle, right? What am I going to have? Sine x cos alpha plus cos x sine alpha. OK, well, by the way, I missed something. Remember I said I'm introducing this whole new function. I don't know what the amplitude will be. I don't know what the phase will be, but I'm going to find them. What that says is these are actually numbers. They're not variables like x. R is actually equal to something, and I'm going to find out what it is. Alpha is also equal to something, and I'm going to find out what it is. So you need to state that R and alpha are numbers I'm going to find, as opposed to variables that can change. Okay. And yes. okay, I've done my expansion now. Let's see where this takes us. I'm going to reframe this ever so slightly. You probably won't notice much of a difference, but in a minute you'll see why I'm reframing it in this way. I'm going to write r cos alpha here, and then I'm going to write r sine alpha here. All I've done, sorry that's a cos, all I've done is I've expanded, like multiplied everything through by r, and I've also slightly rearranged these terms. Okay? Here's why I've done that. Remember where we started? Root 3 on 2 sine x plus 3 on 2 cos x. Right? Look carefully now what we have on the left and on the right. We saw a situation like this back when we were working with quadratic functions sometimes. If you've got something on the left and something on the right and you're saying they're equal and you've got the same kinds of things on both sides, we did this in binomial theorem as well, you can compare them. Look at the sine x's on the left. How many of them do you have? You have root 3 on 2 of them, right? Which is about 0 0.86 something. Okay? But on the right hand side, I also have sine x's. How many do I have? I have r cos alpha of them, wh whatever that happens to be equal to. Right? I'm matching up the sine x's on the left and the sine x's on the right. I can do exactly the same thing for the cosines. Right? Look, this is how many of them I have on the left, and this is how many I have of them on the right. Well, those numbers have to be the same. So therefore, I can say, by comparison, <coughs> r cos alpha equals this, and r sine alpha equals that. Okay? Do you see what I've done? I've looked at the coefficients on each side, and I've said match sines with sines, cosines with cosines. The coefficients out the front ought to be the same. Okay. Now, I've set out to write this down, and I want to know what's the new amplitude, what is the phase shift, what's the auxiliary angle, okay? You've got two unknowns, r and alpha. You've got two simultaneous equations, right? Two unknowns, two equations, I can solve this. I can use this, all the information I need to find out what each value is. Huh. How shall we do it, though? You usually get given simultaneous equations. You're used to seeing something like this. Mm -hmm. 
Something like that, right? You've seen these before, you know exactly what to do. What would you do in this case? This one I've set up so it's nice and easy to eliminate. There's a 2x and 2x, you would just subtract one equation from the other, the x's are going to be gone, you'll have something to do with these and then you can solve for y. Right? You know that if you've got two equations in two variables, you've got to somehow turn them into one equation in one variable. Right? So somehow you've got to do something with these guys to put them together to either get rid of the r's or get rid of the alphas. How would we do it? Would anyone like to suggest something we could do? Yeah. You could divide equation two by equation one and get like 10 alphas. Okay, now just pause for a second. I think the most obvious thing to do is say, if I've got an r here and an r here, if I divide one by the other, the r's will cancel. And as Eric says, if you do this divided by this, you just have tan alpha equals some number. And then off you go. Okay? Now that's not a really bad idea. It's quite clever because it gets rid of your R's in one for suit. It does, however, have a problem that I'm going to highlight for you in a minute. So rather than do that, I just want you to sort of store that in the back of your mind. We'll come back to that in a second. Even though it is less obvious, getting rid of the R's is not as good as getting rid of the alphas. Now I'm going to ask you if what I wanted to do was get rid of alphas, what could I do instead? You know when I gave you trig identity proofs sometimes, and uh, sometimes an identity looked really nice and simple on both sides, and you had to make it messier before it would get neater, right? One of the most common things you would do is if you've got squares, you can work with squares, like cos squares and sine squares, they work together, they play nicely, right? So sometimes you'd have to multiply by something in order to make that happen. I don't have squared, so if I want to introduce them, well, I can take an, an equation, the whole thing, and I can square it. What would that give me if I squared this whole equation? It would be, you've got to do everything, right? R squared, cos squared alpha, and then over here it would be three quarters, wouldn't it? Okay. I could square that. I can also square this equation, right? If I square number two, I'll get r squared sine squared alpha equals 9 on 4, right? Now, if I have r squared cos squared alpha and r squared sine squared alpha, now I can get rid of the alphas. How do I do it? The cos squared plus sine squared is 1, right? Provided you add them. Let's do it. On the left-hand side, I'm going to have this plus this. You see I've squared them and I've added them. That's the two things I've done in here. Okay? On the right hand side, I'm going to square and add those as well. Three quarters? Nine quarters. How's your brain going? You see what I've done? And do you see why I have done it? I'm going to factorize out that r squared now. Three plus nine. <laughs> Too much, right? It's 12 divided by 4 is? But this is brilliant. This is brilliant. R squared times this, this is just 1. So R squared is 3. At the beginning, I gave a restriction. I just said, look, let's just go for positive values of R. You can actually do negative values, but there's no reason. It just unnecessarily complicates things. So therefore, there is one and only one solution to this, namely? What does R represent again, before I take your question? Amplitude. It's the amplitude. I've found the amplitude for this new function. Okay. 